Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to composite real 3D text into an image using Photoshop's 3D tools. You can download the project files for this tutorial to see how everything was put together and have some photos and textures to work with if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. Photoshop's come a long way with its 3D tools and it's now possible to composite 3D objects relatively easily into your scenes, all without leaving Photoshop. Now I'll start by saying that this effect is easiest to do on images that have a clear horizon line and at least some straight lines to make it easier to match your perspective. So here's the image that we're going to put our 3D text into and the first thing that you need to do is double click the background layer to unlock it. Next I'm going to drag a guideline to the center of my image so I can have a point of reference for my text. Next I'll create my text. Now all I have to do is set the paragraph mode to centered and resize my text and place it roughly where I want it to be. Next I'm going to open up the 3D palette and choose 3D extrusion and hit create. This will take us into Photoshop's 3D editing workspace. I'm going to press control semicolon just to hide that center guide. And then the first thing that I want to do is rotate my camera to match this light gray line with my horizon. So I'm going to click up here and use the rotate tool and click and drag on my image to start rotating it to line those up. And sometimes it can be a bit tricky, but you just got to keep trying until you get it. And that's good enough. It doesn't have to be exact. Next, I'm going to click on Environment. And the first thing that I'm going to look at is IBL, which is image-based light. And this simulates light that comes from all directions in our scene. And if I use only IBL, I'll end up with really soft shadows. Since the image that we're compositing our text into has hard shadows, we're going to be using IBL in combination with another point light. So I'm going to click right here and set the color to a very light blue, which is going to simulate light reflecting off the sky and filling our scene. I'm going to change the intensity for that to about 60, set the shadow softness to 75%, and the opacity for those shadows to 95%. Next, I'm going to click Current View, and this is where I'm going to adjust the field of view of my camera, and that's going to match my perspective. Now if you look at the yellow lines in this image, you'll see that they actually match up pretty well with the grid lines from our 3D workspace. That means there's not much that I need to do. But in your image, you might need to change the field of view up or down just to match your perspective. Once you get your grid lines in the 3D workspace matched up with your image, you're ready to move on. Next, I'm going to click my text master layer and I'm going to change my extrusion depth to 150. Then I'm going to come up here and click on the cap panel and change the width of my bevel to 10%. Now I'm going to come over here into my secondary view and change the camera to front and then I'm going to click this button right here to swap my views. Then I'm going to go back into the layers palette and hide my background and I'm going to zoom into my document and using the move tool, I'm going to move my text so it lines up with the ground plane. So I'm going to click my text, make sure the move tool is selected, and then click on the green Y axis and move it down till it matches up. Then I'm going to swap my views back over. So now I'll just zoom out and turn my background back on. Next we're going to create the material for our text. So I'm going to go back into the 3D workspace and I'm going to click on this first text layer which is the front inflation material. I'm going to click the folder icon next to diffuse and I'm going to load the texture into our material editor. Then I'm going to click that same icon and edit UV properties. I'm going to set the scale to 100% in both directions and the offset to 0% and hit OK. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the bump slot. I'm going to load the texture in, then click the icon and choose Edit UV Properties, and then set the scale to 100% and the offset to 0%. Next I'm going to open the Material Editor and I'm going to click this gear icon and choose New Material and I'm going to name this Concrete. And then I'm going to click and highlight all of my text layers. This will select the front, sides, back, and all the bevels for my text. Then I'm just going to come up to the material editor and click that concrete texture that we just made. And that will apply it to all sides of our text. Lastly, we need to edit the light source for our scene. So I'm going to scroll down in the 3D palette until I get to infinite light. And I'm going to change the intensity to 75%. And the softness of the shadows to 3%. 
just to give them a little softer edge. Then I'm going to click and drag in my document to rotate the light to match our scene. Since the light's coming from the upper left, almost at a sideways angle, I'm going to move this until I get it matched up. Once you get your light matched up, you're pretty much done. So you can now click 3D Render or press Ctrl-Alt-Shift-R to render your scene. One of the cool things about the 3D tools is that you can now go back and experiment with things like changing materials, adding new lights, and a whole bunch of other things. You'll notice that your render doesn't look quite right until it gets to the last pass where it does the anti-aliasing. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.